The American Shorthair is one of those breeds that struggled to be appreciated. Even if today they're one of the most famous cats in America, things were very different in the past. American Shorthairs exhibit a memorable look and are praised for their personalities. Together with Maine Coons, American Shorthairs are considered native to the United States. That's because they were here for a long time. I mean, all domestic cats from America have indeed arrived from Europe. On the other hand, they've been here so long it's only fair to call them native. Most likely, British people arriving in the New World brought their cats with them. In truth, there is an undeniable resemblance between American Shorthairs and British Shorthairs. Back then, cats were seen as pest control and were kept as mousers. They were also present in the first permanent British colony. How do we know that? Well, the ancestors of the American Shorthairs are actually mentioned in a document from 1609. Times were tough back then, as you can imagine, for both humans and their four-legged companions. These cats needed proper bodies to survive. The ones that did either had or developed strong jaws and muscular bodies. In time, things got easier. As a result, in the 1800s, people started to appreciate their faithful mousers as something more. At the same time, people became more interested in showing off their cats. These hardy cats were given a name, but it was plain and straightforward. Short hair. By the late 1800s, American short hairs gained the love of cat fanciers. However, the first cat ever registered as an American short hair was imported from Great Britain. Weird, I know. But soon enough, other exotic-looking breeds were imported into the United States. People almost completely forgot about the faithful cats that served them during harsh times. It took a while for the American short hair to regain its lost fame. That's because American short hairs looked very similar to the stray cats living in America. The familiarity of these cats' appearance made people reluctant to value this breed. 1965 was the year American short hairs got their official name. Coincidentally, Incidentally, around that time, American shorthairs started to gain more recognition, but it wasn't an easy process. Some breeders crossed American shorthairs with Persians. This started to take a toll on this breed's hardy look. Fortunately, breeding American shorthairs with other breeds was banned on time. As a result, this breed's muscular appearance was preserved. Fantastic, as these cats are beautiful. American shorthairs aren't big cats. They're medium-sized, weighing from 6 to 15 pounds. Males are considerably larger than females. Even so, they're more than enough to warm up our hearts. American short hairs are solidly built and have well-developed shoulders and chests. Their legs are heavily muscled, a trait that proved handy for survival. Everything about them is on the medium side, except for their head and eyes, which are pretty large. Their full cheeks only add to this breed's charm, making them pretty adorable. American short hairs' eyes are almost round and come in any color. Their expression is alert, curious, and docile at the same time. The most sought-after and widespread color is Silver Tabby, with gorgeous black stripes. It's an iconic look for the breed, as most American shorthairs come in this color and pattern. But it's not the only one. There are many colors and patterns allowed. The American shorthair is one of the most popular breeds in the U.S. It's consistently in the top 10 of the most wanted breeds. However, pretty looks are not the only reason for this. American shorthairs not only look gorgeous, but their personalities are great too. They're a happy medium sort of cat. American short hairs are not too active, but not couch potatoes either. They're not on top of you all the time, but for sure like spending time with you. American short hairs are pretty playful and keep this trait throughout their life. On the flip side, they don't do much running. When playing, they prefer to bat things around rather than having to run after them. These cats are highly adaptable and are really good with other cats or dogs. They're pretty docile and make perfect companions for families with children. When visitors come by, they're not immediately drawn to them, but are not overly scared either. They love receiving attention and cuddles, after which they'll need playtime. Even if domestic, American short hairs have also kept their independence. It is worth mentioning that they generally dislike being held, which is the case with most cats. American short hairs are sweet-tempered but also listen to you. You'll most likely have no trouble eating while in the same room with your cat. This is a big plus for these cats. 
If they sense they're not allowed to do something, they'll just mind their own business. They're not usually the type of cats to wake you up in the morning. Instead, they patiently wait for you to wake up. Their short coats make grooming them a breeze. Due to their highly adaptable and down-to-earth personalities, American short hairs are great even for busy people. They don't demand much, just a few cuddles and playtime sessions. But even if you don't have time to play with them, they're pretty skilled at entertaining themselves. It's not unusual for them to bring you catnip mice as gifts. They're great hunters, but I don't recommend leaving them outside unsupervised. A great way to enrich their lives is to install cat-proof fence extensions or build a safe cat enclosure. It makes me extremely happy American Shorthairs are so popular. They're not only amazing cats, but are usually healthy and hardy. With the proper care, they live until they're 15 or 20 years old. There are few genetic issues these cats can suffer from. That's because they're a naturally occurring breed with a high genetic pool available. On the other hand, some lines can suffer from HCM or polycystic kidney disease. HCM can develop in any cat. Unfortunately, it can cause death at a young age. PKD is most likely inherited from Persian cats as American shorthairs were once bred with them. But there's no need to worry as the incidence of these conditions in American shorthairs is rare. What I always advise anyone looking for a pedigreed cat is to talk with the breeder. Ask the breeder about the incidence of these conditions and other severe conditions in their cat's lineage. Also ask to see the genetic tests and screening of their cats. Every respectable breeder follows these procedures yearly. But how can you find reputable breeders? There are a few ways to make sure you're getting the cat from a breeder and not a scammer. If you're from North America, look for breeders on the following major cat associations, Cat Fanciers Association and the International Cat Association. You can also look up the International Cat Association if you're from Europe or anywhere else. In Europe, there's another established cat association, International Feline Federation. In Britain, there's also the Governing Council of the Cat Fancy. If you cannot find your country listed anywhere, ask your authorities where to find reputable breeders. Also, share the information in the comments. Don't buy a kitten from anyone before checking their registered and follow all procedures. It's the only way to make sure you get a well-cared-for kitten, and one that's less likely to develop health problems. However, every pedigreed cat comes at a relatively high cost. That's because all the tests performed by breeders are expensive. So how much does an American short hair cost? Pet quality kittens are usually priced between $1,000 and $2,000. Of course, prices vary depending on the cattery, color, and country. You can also opt to get a retired adult, about five or six years old, for less. Should you adopt instead? It's a question every future cat owner should ask themselves. Adopting a cat is always the option I recommend, as there are millions of cats in need of a forever home. Stray cats can love you just as much as any other cat, and they're almost free. They're usually overlooked as they're considered feral, but this is a misconception. Stray cats are domestic too. So if you're just looking for a companion, I highly advise you at least go and check out your local shelters before buying a cat. You can also find purebreds or mixed cats there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If so, it would mean the world to me if you give it a like. Feel free to watch my videos about other breeds and subscribe for more videos like this one. See you in my next video!